So remember when we all looked something like this? Do you remember how you felt about authority when you looked something like this? And if you ever met Rick Levin, do you remember if you had any feelings about that? <laughs> So some of you may recognize this is Yale in 2015. So take just a second, check in with yourself, and think about how this picture makes you feel. Does it make you feel proud? Does it make you feel irritated? Does it make you feel like, I would never have done that? Or does it make you feel like, I wish I had done so as those of you who are, and I know my board what your answer is. <laughs> so if you think about your experience in college, we were not a hugely activist class. I know that some people were, but for the most part, we weren't. We were in a somewhat apathetic leaning moment. This is not an apathetic leaning moment on college campuses. So I made it through my whole first year, year and a half, as President of Bennington, without a student protest. And I was feeling pretty good about myself. And maybe it's because I was nine months pregnant when I started the job, and they were all really nice to me. Maybe it's because I was nursing in public spaces for the rest of the year, and so they were all really nice to me. But I thought it was absolutely because I had built an extraordinary rapport with these remarkable students. And that's not 100% untrue, but it's not 100% true either. And the first student protest, the students gathered on the quad outside my office, and they were protesting, I don't know what they were protesting, but it was something important, but it was directed at me. And that was the first moment I thought, holy crap, I'm the man. <laughs> <laughs> and I do not quite know how to cope with that. And I didn't know how to cope quite with the idea that they were directing all of that energy toward me. So I took them on and I kind of peeked out my window. I thought, oh, I should go out there on the quad. I think I'll go out there on the quad. So I went out on the quad, and between my office and the quad is probably about a minute of walking. And I went out there and I thought, this is some kind of defining moment. I don't know what choice I'm going to make when I get in front of it, but this is some kind of defining moment about what kind of the man I'm going to be. Question I never thought I would ask myself. Here we go. <laughs> and listening to them, yeah, take a minute and think about how it feels when one person yells at you. Then think about how it feels when five people yell at you. Then think about how it feels when 50 people yell at you, or 500 people. Think about who you want to be in that moment. So, as often does, my father flashed the land. And what he was saying to me was, they're not 100% wrong. I thought, oh, that's probably true. They're not 100% wrong. In that moment when people are yelling at you, you want to deflect, you want to defend, you want to fix, solve, and resolve. But the first thing you have to do if you're a college president, is figure out what you want them to learn. And to separate that from how it feels to be yelled at. Because my emotion should not drive the train on what those students should learn. Some other part of me, the part of me that's a teacher, needs to drive the train, not the part of me that's the man. So do I want to take the role that they're giving me? Or do I want to own the role that I came here to do? So in that moment of trying to decide what kind of teacher I want to be, I knew too that I had to rebuild the trust with them. And rebuilding the trust with them requires listening. And listening, yes, to what they're saying, listening to the emotional undercurrent underneath it. And some of the things will be silly, and some of the things will be real. So an example from, from another institution, not Yale, not Bennington, was a protest that involved some chants related to culturally appropriate sushi. So I would say that doesn't count as real. And yet, what are they trying to say? Are they trying to tell us something real? What's the truth in what they're saying? 
And what do they need to learn from me to bring that truth to the world in a way that's effective? So my first lesson I took from this person right here. If you don't know who he is, I'm not going to call him out because I'm going to put these on YouTube. But I would say the first lesson of being the man in a protest situation is get out of the convertible. So if you watch a video of this online, if you feel like Googling, you will see that this person, who is the president, did not get out of the convertible. And if you don't treat the students like they are equals, in that moment, while holding the boundary and holding the line, you're never going to get anywhere with that. And so I thought about what my father had said, not that I'm not being 100% wrong. And I thought about what kind of man, the man, I wanted to be. And I thought about what I wanted them to learn. And what I want them to learn is how to be effective. And even if they were talking about something as silly, which wasn't true in our case, silly sounding, that's culturally inappropriate sushi, what are they really trying to do? A protest is an extraordinary act of imagination. <clears throat> They are trying to make the future better than the present. And they are trying to make the future better than the past. So it's our job to teach them the tools to make that possible. It's our job to help them extract from underneath what they might be saying directly, what it is they really want to say to the world. And it's true too, I don't know if this thing has a laser pointer, but if you read some of these signs, there's one in there somewhere that says, if the grown-ups won't do it, we have to. So they're in there. They're talking to me about whatever specific issue on our campus. But really what they're talking about is race, and income inequality, and climate, and gun control, the future of democracy. They're talking about the shot, perhaps, that America is not fully a meritocracy. And so I thought to myself, what the hell else would we want them to be thinking about? What else would we want them to be learning about? And if they don't care about those things, why are they here? And if I don't care about helping them to learn about those things, then why am I here? So that was the moment when I decided what kind of the man I wanted to be. And so I know some of you may have seen images in the news of a variety of different student protests and rolled your eyes at various moments, as believe me, I have, and maybe felt in various moments attacked, even if you weren't the one standing there, which, by the way, does not feel good, to be really clear, it does not feel good. And yet, that moment is the moment when you can turn it. That moment is the moment when you can turn it into something valuable. And so when you see those kids in the newspaper, on YouTube, when you see them rallying around something that you think is stupid, just ask yourself whether or not you want them to be able to engage in that daring act of imagination, of considering a future that is better or different than the past. Because that is what they are doing, and that's what higher education should be all about. Thank you.